if two strong acids are titrated together, the mixture now is composed of two strong acids, not a strong acid with a weak acid, uh, like we studied uh, HCl with acetic. No, now I have a mixture composing of two strong acids. Two strong acids are titrated together. There will be no differentiation between them. No differentiation between them. And only one equivalence point break will occur, corresponding to the titration of both acids. Here, the two acids are strong acids. They are, uh, both of them are strong. They will react at the same moment, at the same second. Will They will start the neutralization reaction with sodium hydroxide. Uh, they, they, they are very similar to each other. So I will obtain a single break. One equivalence point break will occur. I can see in the titration curve of this mixture, only one equivalence point break corresponding to the titration of both acids. Uh, the same is true for two weak acids. If their Ka values are not too different. We said before that if I have a mixture of more than one uh, weak acid, two weak acids or more, uh, they will show different or separate breaks if there is a significant difference in their Ka values. Difference, uh, clear, obvious difference in their strengths, in their Ka values, okay? But if the Ka values is not too different, very near Ka values to each other, very near to each other, no clear difference, no sharp difference, no significant difference, for example, the mixture of acetic acid, Ka is equal to 1.75 times 10 to the power minus 5. And propionic acid, propionic acid is also a weak acid. Its Ka value is 1.3 times 10 to the power minus 5. We can see here in this example that the Ka value for acetic acid and propionic acid very, very, very near to each other. 1.75 times 10 to the power minus 5 and 1.3 times 10 to the power minus 5, very similar values. No significant difference, no sharp difference. So they would titrate together. They would titrate together. They will start the reaction nearly in the same moment, in the same second, in the same time, to give a single equivalence point. In the titration of such a mixture containing acetic acid and propionic acid, if I ask you, how many breaks can we see in the titration curve? It is one break or two breaks. Of course, it is a single one break. Okay? And now we understand why. Why we have a single one break. Okay? Although it is a mixture of two acids. Because the Ka value is very similar to each other. No significant difference between the, the two Ka values. So they will titrate together to give a single equivalence point corresponding to the total acid content, to both of the two acids, okay? Uh, now we will talk about the titration curve of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Sulfuric acid contains two hydrogen in its structure, two protons, okay? The first proton is completely dissociated, 100% dissociated, 100% ionized. That is to say that it is strong acid. The first proton of sulfuric is a strong proton, uh, similar to the proton of hydrochloric acid of HCl, strong proton, strong acid. So sulfuric acid has two protons. The first one of the two is completely dissociated, so it is considered a strong proton. The second proton has a Ka of about 10 to the power minus 2. As we say it has a Ka, Ka, that is to say it is not a strong acid, it is a weak acid. Any acid has a Ka value, it is weak. The strong completely dissociated, it has Ka. 
any strong acid is completely dissociated, it has no Ka. As the second proton has a Ka, so it is a weak acid. It is not a strong acid. It is not completely dissociated. But having a look to the Ka value, it is of about 10 to the power minus 2. It is a large Ka value, a big Ka value, okay? Not like that of acetic or uh, any other weak acid. We, we saw before uh, Ka values of 10 to the power minus 5 and 10 to the power uh, minus 8, small values. But this proton has a Ka of about 10 to the power minus 2, which is a large value. It is a large value. Uh, it's true it is not uh, completely dissociated. It is not strong proton, but it is uh, relatively, relatively stronger than other weak acids. It is weak acid, but relatively strong. It is weak acid. We agree that it is a weak proton, not weak acid, weak proton. The second proton of sulfuric is a weak proton but of large Ka value, similar to that, um, in, similar in strength to strong, to strong acids, similar in strength to strong acids, okay? So I can treat it or consider it as if it is a strong proton. The second proton, the proton, uh, low Ka value, kibira, 10 to the power minus 2. هو صحيح مش strong proton مش completely dissociated بس ممكن اعتبره كأنه 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 strong proton عشان قيمة ال Ka value كبيرة جدا خلت مفيش فرق بينه في القوة وبين ال strong acids okay therefore the second proton is ionized sufficiently to titrate as a strong acid كأنه strong acid as if it is a strong acid in this case the first proton strength and the second proton strength, there is no significant difference in power. There is no significant difference in power. The two protons are similar in their reaction. One is typical, the first one is a typical uh, strong proton, is a typical uh, strong acid completely dissociated, and the second proton has a large Ka value of about 10 to the power minus 2, so I will consider it as if it is a strong acid. It is not a strong, but as if it is a strong one. Okay? So in this case, only one equivalence point break is found. Take care of sulfuric acid. Anyone can ask you, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, its titration curves contain one break or two breaks? Uh, by first look, anyone will say two breaks, it has two hydrogen, so it will have two breaks no not two breaks only one break only one equivalence point break is found in the titration curve of sulfuric acid and now we understand why we have only one uh, break in the titration curve of sulfuric acid the same is true for a mixture of a strong acid and a weak acid with a Ka value of about 10 to the power minus 2. If I have a mixture sample containing two acids, one of them is a strong acid, HCl, for example, and the other one is a weak acid, whatever its name. Uh, I tell you, you have a weak acid with Ka value of about 10 to the power minus 2. In this case, we will have one break or two breaks in the titration curve. I will think the same way as we explained in the case of sulfuric. Sulfuric was one acid with two protons, but here two acids, two acids, a mixture of two acids. But uh, the same case here, the strong acid is very near in its strength to the weak acid having large Ka value of about 10 to the power minus two. So in this case, these two acids will react nearly at the same time, the reaction, with sodium hydroxide will begin nearly at the same time. They have nearly the same strength, so they will show only one break in the titration curve. Instead of two, I will obtain only one break in the case of a sample 
consisting of a strong acid and a weak acid with Ka of about 10 to the power minus 2 because there is no significant difference in strength between these two acids due to the large value of the Ka of the weak acid in this case. Okay? This figure shows the titration curve for sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, although it has two protons, uh, its titration curve shows only one equivalence point break, and we explained why it has only one uh, equivalence break, although it has two protons, because the first one is a strong uh, proton, the second one having uh, a very large Ka value, so uh, the difference in the strength between the two protons is negligible. They will react nearly uh, at the same time, so uh, they will have only one equivalence point break. When I look to this titration curve, uh, it is exactly similar to any titration curve for a strong acid. I can differentiate between this curve, this titration curve, and that uh, for example, for hydrochloric acid for HCl, it has the same shape. So it is a titration curve for sulfuric acid. It has only one equivalence point. Its shape and characteristics exactly like any titration curve for strong acid. It starts from very low pH because the pH is very low. It is a sulfuric acid, highly acidic, begins from a very low pH. Then uh, the pH will increase we have a very sharp break that uh, corresponding to the two protons. And uh, I can use uh, any visible indicator. I can use uh, one in the acidic uh, side, like methyl orange or methyl red. I can use uh, other indicator in the basic side, like phenolphthalein. Uh, both indicators will be uh, uh, suitable. I can use uh, methyl orange, phenolphthalein, or methyl red any one of them because I have a large equivalence point break covering a wide range of uh, pH. So uh, both uh, acidic side indicator and basic side indicator will be suitable for the endpoint determination. The reaction is sharp. I can see easy uh, detectable endpoint and it is perfect for quantitative analysis. Now we will take together the titration curve of a mixture of phosphoric HCl. Phosphoric acid in mixture with a strong acid uh, like HCl when completing the titration on the same portion of sample. Uh, when we talk about uh, titration curves of mixtures of acids, of mixtures, of bases, it is very important to specify do we work on the same portion of sample? That is to say, I take a certain volume of sample in a conical flask. I put the indicator. I start the titration. Um, now I reach endpoint one. After endpoint one, I put the second indicator on the same portion of sample in the same conical flask and, and continue titration till uh, I reach end point two, the second end point. This is a way of working or of titrating uh, the mixture. There is another way is to work on separate conical flasks. I have two conical flasks. I have two independent portions of samples. Uh, I use uh, conical one using indicator one. I work till I obtain end point one. On the second conical flask, uh, I put indicator 2 and I make the titration till the, I obtain uh, endpoint 2 using the second indicator. Uh, the, works, the work differ using two different portions or the same portion of the sample. The same portion of sample, that is to say, the two endpoints in the same conical flask using the same sample. Okay, uh, using two different conicals, two different samples. 
why it is important to specify I am working on the same portion of sample or on two different portions of samples because the calculations will differ. The relation between endpoint 1 and endpoint 2 will differ. If I work on the same conical flask, there will be a relation between endpoint and end 1 and endpoint 2. If I work on two separate conical flasks or two different portions of samples, the relation will be different. The relation between endpoint 1 and endpoint 2 will be different. So here in this example, I will be working, I will be carrying out the titration on the same portion of sample. That is to say, I will continue endpoint 1 and endpoint 2 on the same sample in the same conical flasks using two indicators. I will begin with one indicator, then I obtain endpoint 1, then I put the second indicator, I complete titration till I obtain the second endpoint. Okay? Now we will follow up the titration. The first proton of phosphoric titrate with HCl. Okay? What, what I mean by this sentence? The first proton of phosphoric is nearly, nearly uh, similar to the strength of HCl. So the first proton of phosphoric together with the proton of HCl will start the, re the reaction nearly at the same time and they will uh, begin a neutralization reaction against sodium hydroxide together, giving one break. That is to say, the first break, uh, in, the, in the first break, the first proton of phosphoric and the proton of HCl react together. They will react uh, at the same time with sodium hydroxide and they will show the reaction in the first break. The first break of titration curve include the first proton of phosphoric and the proton of HCl. Uh, and the pH at the equivalence point is determined by the equation for the calculation of pH of the dihydrogen phosphate salt. Okay, uh, upon neutralization of HCl, it will be converted to sodium chloride and water. Upon the neutralization of the first proton of phosphoric acid, the phosphoric acid will be will react with the first proton and it will be converted to the dihydrogen phosphate salt. The dihydrogen phosphate salt. The sodium chloride and water, pH 7, neutral, so no problem, I will neglect it. I will talk now about the dihydrogen phosphate salt. It is an acid salt. It is an acid salt. So I will use the equation for the calculation of pH of acid salt to calculate the pH at the first equivalence point, and pH will be equal to half pKa1 plus pKa2. And as we know, pKa1 and pKa2 are the two pKa of phosphoric acid, the pKa1 and pKa2 of phosphoric acid. Uh, after the first uh, equivalence point, this is followed by the titration of the second proton, the second proton of phosphoric acid will react now to give the second equivalence of phosphoric. First break, first endpoint was for the first proton of phosphoric plus the proton of HCl. The second endpoint or the second break uh, will be specific for the second proton of phosphoric acid. Okay, there is a difference uh, in strength between the first proton of phosphoric and the second proton of phosphoric. So uh, the second proton of phosphoric will be uh, titrated in the second titration break, in the second break in the titration curve. The second inflection, it will show a separate inflection or a separate break in the titration curve. Okay, uh, the end point one in this titration is equivalent to the total acidity. Total acidity, that is to say the first proton of phosphoric plus the proton of HCl. We say total 
because it is concerning about the two acids. Total acidity here means uh, it expresses the acidity of the two acids, the phosphoric acid representing by the first proton and the hydrochloric acid. Okay, this is in point one, equivalent or expressing the total acidity of this mixture. First proton of phosphoric plus the proton of HCl. The second endpoint or endpoint two is equivalent to the phosphoric acid content only because using endpoint two by certain calculation, I can determine the concentration of phosphoric acid alone because uh, it is specific for the second proton of phosphoric. Specific for the second proton of phosphoric. So endpoint one, first proton of phosphoric plus proton of HCl, that is to say total acidity. Endpoint two, phosphoric acid content only because it is concerning only about the second proton of phosphoric. Of course, the third proton is too weakly ionized to be titrated. As we said before, uh, that uh, the third proton of phosphoric acid is very, very, very weak. So by direct acid-base neutralization titration, I cannot determine it and I cannot have a sharp break for its determination. I can you know, not use a visual indicator for its determination. So by, by normal direct acid base, it is too weakly ionized to be titrated. Okay. Now I finished my part in the acid base titrimetry course. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be with you in the labs or you can ask any question you want on the teams. You can send your question and I will send you the answer. Uh, good luck for all of you and uh, good luck in the exams. Goodbye.